Hello! Today we are going to be wiring up this, or looking at and wiring up this uh, half horsepower Brooks Griffin motor. Um, it comes from my Atlas 10 lathe. I, I built the lathe set. I'll just give you a, a clip of that uh, at the end of the video. And uh, I'm going to wire this up, so let's just have a look at that. I've cleaned the name plate off, and you can see there. It's a Griffin, uh, quite a lot of that's wiped out. Uh, made by Brooks Motors of Huddersfield. It's a single phase, half horsepower motor. So what we're going to do is quickly whip open this uh, back panel and have a look. The reason for doing the rewiring is because uh, <laughs> this is the cable it came with and uh, you can see that that insulation no longer quite meets uh, current safety standards and the rest of the uh, the wire is uh, not that much better. So what I've done is I've made up a new wire like this, put some ends on it and let's have a look at the motor. Firstly it's a capacitor start um, rather than a capacitor run up at that torch. You can see in here, if you look, let me see if I can show you in there. I don't know if we could be able to see that. We should just just move that away. You might be able to see in there there is a centrifugal switch. Let me just turn that over like that actually. You can see just in there there is a centrifugal switch and that turns the starter coil and capacitor off once the motor is running. It's quite a heavy motor but it's also about 70 years old and still runs sweet as a nut. So what I've done, I've probed it with a um, multimeter all over the place. It's obviously had some weirdness done to it over its life. And I'm just going to put up a screen print of various different wiring diagrams you can get. There are, the Griffin comes in a number of different alternative styles from three phase, two phase, and in this case either split phase or single phase with a starting capacitor. So first I'm just going to go and whip off the starting capacitor so we can have a look at that. Nope, no, that's 516th that is. If you're uh, wondering, these are 516th. Nope, not that one. Mix those up. And I've already had this open. And in there is a 70 year old British made or English made starting capacitor 120 microfarad if I can get the bugger out there we go there we go that thing there, 70 years old, and I've tested it, and it's perfect. I've also tested continuity between here and various different parts. This is across the um, starter coil, which I'll come to in a minute. I'll just pop up the circuit diagram of this specific motor, and I identified that. You can identify that because it's got four terminals primarily. means it's a single phase and then if you look at the numbers on the terminals back on the terminals are let me just have a look we have up here that's a1 
and that down there is a two that's your main running coil and you put your mains across that doesn't matter which way round it goes it'll run the same direction either way round this here is your starting coil it has also got the centrifugal switch in it and the capacitor um, and if you want to change direction this one currently set to run clockwise what you do is you take this lead off here and this lead off here and you swap those two over which I'll do in a minute but for the moment I'm just going to wire it up and run it so we're going to go and feed this cable in through that hole slightly awkward because I've got three crimp connectors on there but maybe I'll feed that one through separately in a sec that's all three through pull that in there start off with the earth And we're going to connect up those two. Push that in. Right, now what you want to do is, that's a quarter inch. You want to make sure you don't uh, drop those nuts off. Because fishing them out of the inside of a motor is going to be a pain and you do need to do that before you turn it on. So if you use a nut driver like this, you can get it off capture it in there. So that's the live connected to which one's that? Z1 and main cable in this case. That back in there. Take it down. Neutral over. I'm putting the nut in there first because it's much harder to drop if it's in there. That's wired up. So let's just follow this up, for which purpose I have an extension lead because I don't have a switch for this yet. 
I have an extension lead with a switch on it. And what you're about to see oops, is a spark from the centrifugal switch as it switches out. So I'll plug that in and off it goes. Runs very nicely, it's got two oil caps. I'll put some bearing oil in there. And I'll just turn it round. Run it again. There you go. You can see that that is, should be running clockwise. Now it says it runs at 1400 and, hold on, I'll tell you what, let me just put a mark on there that you can see, I rubbed the mark that was on that off, do that again. And you can see it's definitely running clockwise as it slows down. Slightly concerned by that slight knocking noise, I'm not sure what's causing that. There you go. Let's just go and see what the revs are. I've put a little um, reflective strip on there. RPM just about. Now to show you how easy it is to change the wiring, what I will be doing is I'll be fitting a five wire cable in here. I've just unplugged it by the way. I'll be fitting a five wire cable in here. The reason for fitting a five wire cable is that I can then um, take all four of these terminals and the earth out. Uh, and I can fit a changeover switch so I can reverse it. And I'll show you uh, a lathe with a changeover switch on it. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to swap this lead from going from A1 to Z1. I'm going to put A1 to Z2. I'm going to put A2 to Z1. So if I go and take that out of the way, take that off there. Not quite sure why. I mean, this is such a mishmash in here. It's unbelievable. Let me just pull that cable up. And I think we can get rid of these link cables, which look a bit dodgy. Take that one off as well. So if now take this one, put that over here, this one over here. And if you want to run it in changeover, you require a three-pole changeover switch, which I've just got. Uh, yeah, three-pole changeover switch, which I've got coming. So we've got that wired up there. We're now going to plug that in. And you can see it runs. But just to show its change direction. Also, there's the speed of it. runs as fast anti-clockwise as it does clockwise. If I turn it off, you can watch it slow down. And that's now turning anti-clockwise. 
Now I will rewire that so it runs clockwise because I need it to run clockwise for my application. But there you go. I'll turn that off. That's how you wire up a Griffin, depending on which way around you want it to go. I'll just show you my lathe with a reversing switch on it, so you can have a marvel at right, that. So here is a Myford 7, um, currently unused. It was uh, built in 1951. Hasn't done any work yet. Has a Hoover motor in there. It's a four wire motor. For one reason or other, it hasn't got an earth connection on it, but never mind. And up here is a reversing switch, which I will just very briefly show you. So you can have a look at it. It's uh, quite an interesting looking switch. Here it is. Forward that way and reverse that way. And when I got it, it was wired up so that when you put it in reverse, it went forward. And when you put it in forward, it went in reverse. But there we go. I'll just turn that on. Doesn't that sound like a lovely little lathe? And there it goes backwards. And that's useful for thread cutting when you don't have a thread dial indicator on this. And I don't have on either lathe, which is why I want them to reverse. And here, nice and painted up is a stand for the Atlas 10, which you can see is quite a lot bigger than this. So, there we go. And, uh, thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.